Okay, in this video, we're going to have a look at a technique that can help you complete your project faster or even solve a problem that you're having. Now, if you look at my breadboard, I have a PIC microcontroller. You can see here, it's on my scamp board. Now, we could interface this microcontroller to many types of sensors. We could have sensors that detect voltage, current, resistance. We could have an accelerometer to detect tilt or vibration. We could have a time of flight sensor or ultrasonic sensor for range. Now all these sensors we could set up a threshold so when a threshold is exceeded we're going to get an alarm. So we could have a tilt sensor and if we have a tilt that say tilts more than 45 degrees we could have alarm. Now in this video we're going to have a look at temperature because this chip right here is a temperature sensor and this blinking light that's blinking here it's taking a reading of the temperature every 500 milliseconds or half a second and if the threshold is exceeded, if it drops below zero degrees C, we're going to get an alarm. Now this alarm trigger is going to be sent back on the power lines. You can see these two wires here. This is a twisted pair. It's feeding power to the circuitry. Now when we get an alarm, it's going to send the, the alarm data back on these two wires. So it's a very simple interface. It's a two-wire interface. It's all we need. It makes, this, it makes the circuit very simple. So in this video, we're going to have a look at how we could do that. Okay, here's an example of a very simple setup. Now on a farm in Canada, we have very cold winters, so we have to blow out all our irrigation lines with compressed air and drain all our water pumps before the cold weather hits. Otherwise, we'll get freezing happening. Now sometimes we have to monitor some of our buildings on the property, and there's no power in these buildings. So we have this set up here. So we have our farmhouse with a power supply and the alarm detector. And all we have to do is feed a twisted pair to the building and inside there we have the microcontroller with the temperature sensor. Now when the threshold is exceeded, goes below zero, it's going to send alarm back on the power lines back to the interface board to light up the LED and to uh, set off a beeper. So it's a very simple setup. Now I've used batteries in, in, our, in our building with a lower radio but then you have to worry about uh, changing batteries and monitoring the batteries. So this is very simple. Once this is set up you just leave it and forget about it. Okay, here's the whole setup, wired up. So on the left is the power supply. So I'm feeding 9 volts into the circuitry here. And it has an LED for detection. So it's sending power over the twisted pair to the microcontroller board, which has the temperature sensor. Well, I have some cold spray. So if I spray the sensor, it's going to detect it. And this LED over here will come on. So I'll spray the sensor. You can see the LED. It's come on, indicating the threshold has been exceeded and if I put my finger on the sensor warm it up you can see the LED goes out. Now the detecting circuit is fail safe if the twisted pair gets cut so it goes open or gets shorted the alarm will go off telling us there's a problem we have to go out there and investigate so if I pull off one of the wires indicating an open circuit so say the wire gets cut the alarm will go off tell us there's a problem now if I put it back she clears and I could put a short right across the power supply so if we get a shorted condition it also will alarm we get alarm so we have to go out there and investigate and we pull off the short it will clear so it's fail safe so we need that so we know if there's any problems with the circuit okay here's the schematic diagram of the circuit that I built on my breadboard now the circuit on the left is the power supply and alarm decoder circuit circuit on the right is the scamp board with the microcontroller and the temperature sensor and they're connected together with a twisted pair. Now the circuit on the left is a monostable, a 4538 monostable. It's retriggerable and the RC time constant of 330k ohm resistor and 3.3 microfarad capacitor will give an on time of one second. So every time we get a high to low transition into pin 5 the Q0 will go low for one second then come up high. Now if we have constant pulses into pin 5 faster than one, one second, the Q0 will always be low. And we're getting those pulses from the circuit from the microcontroller. Now when the temperature is above 0 degrees C, we're going to get pulses coming out of pin 3, GPIO pin 3, every 500 milliseconds, which will short out the power supply and give these edges into pin 5 of the monostable. Now while we're shorting out the power supply, this 1000 microfarad capacitor is holding the voltage into VN of the scamp board and it can't discharge this way because it's being blocked by this diode. So whenever the temperature is above zero, we're getting these pulses, which is keeping the Q0 low 
and when the temperature goes below zero, these pulses will disappear, the MOS table will time out, and the Q0 will go high, and we'll get an alarm on the LED. Okay, here's the code running on the scamp board, and it's written in Flashforth, and it's very simple, it's only a few lines. So the first word we see is pulse pin 3. Now when you run pulse pin 3, GPIO pin 3 will go high for one millisecond, then go low. So we're going to get a one millisecond pulse. So pin 3 is set, so it goes high for one millisecond, then it goes low. Now that pulse is going to be fed into the base of the NPN transistor. So every time we run pulse pin 3, the power supply will be shorted out for one millisecond. So our main word is called alarm. So the first thing we do, we make pin 3 an output. That's GPAO pin 3. And we set it to zero. We clear it. Then we go into a begin and again loop. It's a continuous loop. It's always running. And it runs every 500 milliseconds or half a second. So the, f so the first thing we do, we blink the LED on the scamp board. That indicates that we're taking a temperature measurement. So we take a temperature measurement and we're going to get back an integer and a fractional and I just want the integer so I drop the fractional off the stack and then we compare it to zero. Now if it's greater than zero meaning it's not freezing we're going to get a pulse on pin 3 every 500 milliseconds but if the temperature is below zero then we won't get a pulse the pulses will go away and this is in a continuous loop always monitoring uh, the temperature to give us pulses when it's above zero and no pulses when it's below zero. Okay, so now you know how this setup works where you could feed power and data over the same twisted pair and it really simplifies the setup. And there's my capacitor and my transistor and diode. So only need about three components and a microcontroller to get this setup to work. Now I've designed control and monitor circuits for boilers and we use a protocol called OpenTherm. You can look that up, go online. It's very similar to this where we have power and data on the same twisted pair. A little bit more complicated, but it's the same sort of uh, idea. So if you have a microcontroller circuit you want to put somewhere where there's no power, you could consider using this setup where you have power and data over the same twisted pair.